The Great University Gamble is about higher education reform in England. It attempts to get beyond the headlines of higher tuition fees and lay out the obscure yet profound changes that are taking place across the system. In effect, it tries to present how money moves around the system differently in England. And as such, it attempts to convey to the general reader the sense in which the financing of higher education is going to become increasingly important in terms of determining what it is we receive as higher education. The book is written as a primer, and I mean that in the sense that it's intended for a general readership. I've pitched it in that way because I believe we're currently facing a democratic deficit around higher education reforms, and I mean that in two ways. On the one hand, the measures being proposed and pushed forward by the government are being done without primary legislation. That means that our representative democracy isn't engaging with those proposals and those changes in the way it would that would enable them to be subject to oversight and scrutiny. And also because they involve money, this is, and money is becoming increasingly complex, the forms, social forms in, under which it appears in modern society, the general sense in which we talk about higher education is no longer useful. I mean, our habits of thought aren't appropriate to the complexity of this new terrain. So the book attempts to set out all the devices that the government's used, statutory instruments, budget decisions, instructions to quangos, and puts this obscure and piecemeal developments together into, a, to, if you like, a, to put together the pieces in, of a jigsaw to show what the overall effect of these various changes, all of which pass below the radar to some extent. And on the other hand, it it addresses a democratic deficit in another sense, which is that neither the public nor academics or students have very much say in the running of particular institutions. And institutions are increasingly going to have to make very difficult decisions about how they position themselves in the new market and what kind of corporate strategy they adopt. And vice-chancellors and the executive management and various other people involved in universities have new forms of decision to make and it's not clear that either the government governing board bodies nor the members of the academic community, students or staff, and others who work at the university have a proper say in these new kind of decisions. So this book is an attempt to demystify some of the technical terms knocking around, you know, the financial presentations that universities would use to justify their decisions, attempt to demystify those and explain to the lay reader what is going on when these new, new devices appear, when new forms of um, company appear, joint ventures, subsidiaries, but also new forms of financing, such as bonds, appear within university accounts. So in, in a kind of very straightforward sense, the book is about accounting and accountability. It's really an attempt to, to do something akin to public interest journalism and to provide concerned parties and activists with the kind of information they need at a local and national level to interrogate what's going on, both at the policy level, the level of the nation, national higher education system, but also at the level of decisions made by individual institutions. And in that sense, the book really focuses on three areas. Um, markets, financing, privatisation. And I suppose that was the, that's the point on which to sort of conclude this, this summary of the great university gamble. What it sets out to do overall is to bust the myth that um, private money can replace public money without profound effects on the system. And in this case, I think a number of the potential impacts on the systems are inherently risky, um, pernicious, and will transform at root what we understand higher education to be. And therefore, the book, in one sense, tries to give the public, the activists, academics, students, potential ap applicants to university, the resources from which they can learn how to interpret and interrogate policy at the national level, but also decisions made by university executives, because they'll be made in a terrain now which is incredibly complicated and really doesn't look like the terrain even 10 years ago. So the basic message of the book is it doesn't offer many policy recommendations, it doesn't part around regulation, but it's really a guide to the individuals, communities, how to follow the money and to hold decision makers to account and to interrogate those. And in that sense, it's an attempt to boost democratic practice at the local as well as the national level. I mean, the, the general point is there is, no, there is no magic solution to the funding of higher education. It is expensive. 
but at the same time, the fact that we won't commit public money to it is uh, is, is a, pro a problem that we need to address and, and, and rethink. The new system of private funding just doesn't look like it will work and carries risks that we don't have the regulatory framework in pl place to mitigate.